grow through prayer, uh, how we grow, and then this morning we're going to look at through prayer. And this morning I'm going to just speak informally, very practically, I'm going to tell some stories as well, just very briefly as we come, as we get into this topic. And next week we'll continue, we have some plenty of other scriptures as well, but this morning I just want to talk a little bit about prayer, and we want to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit. How does the Holy Spirit help us in prayer, and what is His part in prayer? So we look at this, and Amy, just just follow along with me. I may be jumping a little bit, but she'll she'll be fine. So we come this morning to we return to our series on how we grow as Christians, and I've included all of this because prayer. Paul says, as we'll look in just a little bit, um, a little bit later, Paul says, pray on all occasions, in all ways, in all manners. And I, I liked, I wanted to include that because it's a reminder to us that prayer does not come in one particular form. If you come from a formal church background, then you have a strong idea or a strong image of what prayer should look like, right? It should be a little formal. You should use special language. Um, depending on your church background, you should use King James English to pray. Um, and I, I was thinking about it. You know my father uses King James English to pray. Not because he's trying to impress anybody, but you know he's read the Bible in King James for so long. That's kind of his prayer language, I guess. Um, but it doesn't require any special language. and. Paul says pray in all manners of prayer. And I was thinking about that. What, is your, what does your prayer time look like? What do your prayers look like? Do you save them for Sunday? Do you save most of your prayer time for Sunday morning? Do you have to have a place where you sit down and you pray for a certain amount of time? It's like, okay, I give this much time. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's good to have some discipline in our lives with prayer or else prayer just kind of goes, right? But Paul says, pray on all occasions. It's to, be, it's to be part of our lives in many different ways. I was thinking about myself and prayer, and honestly, for me, there's a prayer that I pray so often. I, I really do. I really pray this way, and it's not taking the na Lord's name in vain. I, one of my common prayers so often is, oh God, oh God, and it's not like the world says it. You know how the world says it, right? And, oh, I hate that. Ch parents, if, if your children have gotten used to saying it like so many people say it, and they use the Lord's name, or if, if, if you've kind of gotten to that habit, oh, God, oh, God, let the Lord help you to remove that from your vocabulary, because that's, we're talking about our God. We're talking about our God. So I'm not talking about it in that way, but truly, from my heart, one of my prayers very often, oh God, and sometimes, oh God, help. And I, and I may not even say any more than that. But prayer comes in all forms, in all ways. And as I said <coughs> in the first service, I've tried more and more, as I've gotten older in the Lord and more mature in the Lord, I have tried to consciously simplify how I pray. Because with my background and my education, I have a tendency, I love pretty words. Did you know? I, re I really do. I love these beautiful words and eloquence. And I, I really do. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that as well. But I've tried to simplify that in my own life when I talk to God. So that I'm really just speaking how I am and what I am to God. Oh, oh God. And then sometimes I'll tell him, God, I don't feel like praying today, but I know I should. Help me to pray today. I do. I really pray that. Oh, God, help me to pray today. And I want to tell you something. If somebody tells you, oh, if they look down on you because that's how you struggle sometime, then they are not being honest with you. They're not being honest with you. All all of us, the most mature of us, we struggle with prayer at times. It's not always easy. So don't let someone put you down about prayer. But as we look at prayer this week and next week, be encouraged and let the Holy Spirit challenge you to go further than you've gone in prayer. And I'm praying that for myself as well. All of us can go further. All of us can go further. <coughs> and that's what we're looking at. <coughs> Quickly as review, the next slide. Here's the reminder from Acts 2.42 that we've been talking about as how we grow. We're going to focus on prayer this morning, but we're looking at how we grow. Here's the first thing. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. What is that? 
the Word of God. Okay, so that's what we talked about first. There's the first pillar or the first nutrient, if you will. If we're going to grow, we've got to have the Word of God. Why do we have to have the Word of God? The Word of God helps to anchor us. If, you don't, if you're not taking the Word of God in your life, you know what's going to happen? You're going to depend on your feelings. You're going to depend on your feelings. In the, in the book of Revelation, it says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. This has to do with the word, what God has done in them. And there's a foundation that comes in the word and a strengthening in the word that will keep you from flopping and, and wobbling in prayer and in your Christian life. We've got to have it. But that's not all we can have because there's some people that the word, the word, the word, but then they're not strong in prayer and when you're strong 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 in the word but you don't have you're not giving place in your life for prayer then you can get it can get very dry can't it and some of us we know that as well some of us it can get really dry um, if you're just all oh, prayer 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 you know what can happen you can also get then you can get very uh, you can be you can get kind of off, get off on emotional tangents and things like that so God has included all of this to help us grow so they Devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Remember the second nutrient, if you will, to help us grow was fellowship and sharing in the meals, including the Lord's Supper. And that is part of growth. The Christian that isolates himself or herself is not going to grow in as healthy a way as Christians who choose, I am going to link my life with other Christians. I'm going to choose to open my life and my heart and my time to other Christians. And frankly speaking, brothers and sisters, it's a lot easier not to do that. I mean, it's a lot more comfortable not to do that. Because if it's just you and God, nobody's talking to you about your life. Nobody's challenging you with, do you think this is, this is not honoring to the Lord in your life? You know, when you spoke that way, it was a little bit sharp. Has somebody ever said that to you? <laughs> We don't like it, do we? But part of fellowship is the correction and the encouragement that comes. So I, I urge you, I urge you, don't isolate yourself. Fellowship is part of growth. And if you isolate yourself, then you will not grow healthily as you should. You won't grow healthily as you should. Then what comes next? And then, and to prayer. And prayer is what we're going to look at this morning. So here were the three things that they were focusing on. And I was thinking about this, and we may do some skipping around, Amy, but I was looking at this. They devoted themselves to prayer. These are young Christians. Of course, a lot of new believers have come in to the church. But as I was thinking about this, I thought, you know what? The nucleus, the nucleus of the new church, number one, it was the disciples, the, 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 the 11, and then they got another one, um, so it was 12, and then it was the 120 or more. There would have been more than 120. And then others as well. And they devoted themselves to prayer. Why do you think they devoted themselves to prayer? Why do you think that was so much a part of their lives? I was thinking about this, and actually I was sitting there part of the time we were singing, I went back and I was looking at, I was looking at scripture and, and it wasn't even in my notes, but I looked back at Luke 11, and in Luke 11 it says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. So that's Luke 11, 1. And I was thinking about that this morning. So. The disciples saw Jesus pray. I want to ask you something. They look at him and they say, teach us to pray. Now what impressed them and why do they later give themselves to prayer after Jesus is gone, after he's returned to heaven? What was it about the prayers of Jesus that said, Lord, teach us to pray? Do you think it was fancy words? It couldn't have been fancy words. If anybody had fancy words to pray, it was the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, and the priests of the temple. They're the ones who had the fancy words. Do you think it was pomp and ritual in prayer in some way that would be impressive? No. They had that in the Jewish rituals at that time. Was it length of prayer? No. In, in the Jewish rituals and in the system, the religious system that they had, there was all of that. So there was something about Jesus as he prayed that, that prompted their hearts, Jesus, teach us that, teach us that. And I was, I was thinking about that and I had been thinking about it this week. And as we look at that, and if, as we look at what Jesus teaches them and he tells them, and it's all about prayer, and then he talks about the Holy Spirit, 
I believe that when, we, when they saw, when they heard Jesus pray, they saw Jesus pray, and then they saw the results. They saw there's something different here than, from what, than what we're used to, than what we know. And I believe they saw in Jesus someone who spoke to God the Father as if he were right there, as if he, he, he's really listening. And I expect he's listening, and I expect there to be an answer. Honestly, we sometimes pray. We don't expect any answer at all, do we? We just, we just pray. You know, we, we should pray. And we don't have any sense of God's presence, do we? We just pray. And in our thought, God is up there <laughs> in heaven. And, I, and as we can see, that's not how Jesus prayed at all. And the disciples looked at his life and they said, teach us to pray that way. What impressed them? It wasn't, it, it wasn't all of those external things. It was something in the heart of Jesus. It was something in the communication of Jesus to a father. You're here. You're my father. I speak to you. You speak to me. You move and you work when I pray. And then Jesus goes back to heaven. And I, as I look at it, I think those disciples are thinking Jesus is gone. He's not here now. How are we going to get to know Jesus better? How are we going to, re to remember his teachings? How are we going to know what he wants us to do? How are we going to follow him? How are we going to have power to carry out everything that he's called us to carry out? We're going to have to talk to Jesus. We're going to have to talk to Jesus in the same way that Jesus talked to the Father. And they devoted themselves to prayer. They devoted themselves to prayer. God help us as present-day disciples to do the same thing, to do the same thing. As I said when I began, I'm speaking very practically this morning, and I'm going to be speaking very practically next week as well, just as we talk about prayer and <coughs> how we pray. Um, I'm going to click over, uh, uh, sorry, just the next slide very quickly, and we might come back to it next week. Um, but here are some of the results of their fellowship, of their word, of the being grounded in the word and of prayer. Sense of awe came over them, and awe means a reverence and an, a, a reverence due to the sense of God is with us, God is present. Do you, know, you know what I mean, don't you? Sometimes when we're praising the Lord and worshiping, it's often maybe when we're singing or during times of worship, and there's that sense in your heart, right? There's a sense in your heart, oh God. You are here with us now. You know what I mean, don't you? And it's not just in my head, God is here with us. He will never leave me nor forsake me. But there's the sense of, you're here. And that, that describes awe. That describes the reverence of acknowledging that God is here. So there was this. Out of that, then what else happens? There are miraculous signs and wonders. Whenever God is acknowledged, whenever God is given His place, God will do miraculous things. He will. That's what He does. And then after that, what comes next? I love this. Verses 44 and 45. Jealousy, selfishness, possessiveness, all of that disappeared. Okay? All of that disappeared. One of the true marks of the presence of God in a gathering and the move of God and the work of God in people's hearts and lives is we will give up selfishness, jealousy, envy, possessiveness. Whatever we have or whatever we don't have, those things disappear when God is at work and our hearts and our lives are open to Him. Why? Because God is a generous God. He really is. He just pours out so freely on us. Doesn't have to, but He loves, and so he loves us and so He does. And when He does that, and when he, when he does that, when He's active in our lives, He does that to us, doesn't He? I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like, it's mine. It's mine. And I don't, I'll be real honest with you. Sometimes I don't want to share. And you know what? You don't either. Because we're human. We're human, and that's why we need God to work in our midst to change that. Because you know what? I don't know about you. When I see it in myself, and I really see it, it's really ugly. It's really ugly, and I don't want to be that way. And I know you don't want to be that way either. But only God can change that in our hearts and lives. So we see that as a result. They sell things, and then you'll notice that there's true worship. There's sharing. There's joy. There's generosity. And then after that, what comes next? <coughs> They're praising God. There is not, it's not, there's not, have you found that when God is moving and working, He takes care of a spirit of grumbling and complaining? Have you found that to be true? Do you ever, you know what, when Betty and I used to, when we lived in China, Sister Betty and I lived in China, 
you know, this was back in the 80s and the 90s. Keith knows what that was like. Sometimes we'd get together, we'd just complain. It was, it was tough. It was hard. And we'd start complaining, and finally one day Betty said, I'm so sick of this. And I looked at her, I thought, what are you talking about? She said, all we're doing is complaining. And I thought about it, and I thought, oh, that's true. That's true. And so, and so we said, Lord, help us. And she said, okay, after one complaint per day, you got to stop. She said, and I'll stop too. <laughs> and you know what? It was really hard. It took, the help of, it took the help of the Holy Spirit. It really, really did. But when God is at work, and we're laughing, but honestly, it's true, isn't it? Yeah. It's true. But when God is present and when He's working, He, he, do, he takes care of that. He really does. He, he, he puts a check on our, on our hearts and spirits and on our tongues as well. And so they're enjoying this, and then as a result of that, 47b, the Lord adds to the fellowship. And that's part that grows out of, as they themselves are growing and taking in of the Lord, then this overflows in the lives of others. That is why, brothers and sisters, that is why. And part of that is prayer. So we're focusing on prayer just in the short time that we had left. And I told you I was going to tell you some stories, but we turn, next slide. <coughs> We turn, that is why Paul talks about, because there's nothing else that will take its place. This is why Paul says in Ephesians 6.18, in the first part, he says, pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. When Paul says pray in the Spirit here, because there's nothing else that will take the place of praying in the Spirit, is he talking about speaking in tongues here? He probably includes praying in tongues and the language that the Holy Spirit gives you as you are filled and then refilled um, with the enabling of the Holy Spirit. But it's not just that. It also means under the control of the Holy Spirit, guided by the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit. I challenge you, go back and look at the New Testament this week and you will see in the New Testament so often when prayer is talked about in the New Testament, do you know what else you will see in, in the same place with prayer? You will see the mention of the Holy Spirit. The mention of the Holy Spirit. Why? Brothers and sisters, the realm of prayer, it's the Holy Spirit's realm. It is. It's the Holy Spirit's realm. He's the expert in this area. And that's why Jesus promised, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you another comforter, another encourager, a strengthener is what it means, a helper, one who comes alongside. In Luke 11, he says, I will give the Holy Spirit. If, if earthly fathers give good gifts, how much more will the heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And then in another place, and that's, by the way, Luke 11, when Jesus says that, do you know what that passage is all about? You go back and look. Luke 11, that, pa that chapter begins with Jesus praying, the disciples saying, Master, teach us to pray like that. And Jesus talks about prayer, and then he ends with that example. Brothers and sisters, if you and I are going to pray as we need to pray, we're going to have to have the Holy Spirit's help. We, we have to. We have to. Because in ourselves, we grow discouraged. In ourselves, we don't know how to pray. In ourselves, we are powerless. And so Jesus includes, when he talks about prayer, when Paul talks about prayer, <coughs> pray in the Spirit. We're going to have to have the help of the Spirit to pray. In 1 Corinthians, we'll come back to this next week. In 1 Corinthians, and we'll stop with this one, then I'll finish with those stories that I told you about. The one who speaks in another language or a tongue. And here, there's no question. Now, Paul is doing a whole teaching about prophecy and tongues and things like that. So you'd have to look at it in the whole context, but I'm, and I'm just pulling part of it. But the point, one of the things he's saying here is, here, when he speaks in tongues or another language, here there's no question. Here he is he is talking not just about with the help of the Holy Spirit. Here he's talking about speaking in a language that the Holy Spirit gives you that is not a learned language. Okay? So that's what he exactly means here. And he says he builds himself up or he helps himself grow. Now I was thinking about that. And I thought, God, you're so good. Uh, let's just stay with it. Uh, yeah, you can just look at this. We'll come to it next week. Build yourselves up in your most holy faith. How? By praying in the power of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, it's going to take the help of the Holy Spirit. 
as, he, as, as we are built up. And I was thinking about that. Here's the gift of the Holy Spirit, which we'll talk more about next week. And God gives us this gift of the Holy Spirit to help, in part, to help us pray. To help you pray. To help me pray. And we so often ignore Him, don't we? We try on our own. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit is there to help us pray. We are built up. We're praying for something. And we're praying with the help of the Holy Spirit. And as we pray, do you know what happens? Maybe we're praying for a family member. We're praying for something else. And you know what happens as we pray in the language of the Spirit? We ourselves are built up. We're not trying to do it, but we're built up. A, a gift that keeps on giving. Really. A double, at least a double gift from the Lord. And there's more than that. So I urge you and I encourage you in this. If you have not received this gift from God the Father, how much more will He give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? That's the, those are the words of Jesus. Seek God about this. The last evening, and we'll, we, I close with this. I told you I was going to tell you about that little boy and then that man. Um, I, was, I was praying in the afternoon and Re, uh, Pastor Renna had asked, she said, would you teach on the Holy Spirit? So I, I, was teaching, I was teaching on that each night. But it was kind of, I thought, God, how are we going to do this? Because she said, I want people to pray for the baptism, the, the filling of the Holy Spirit. But you know what? Every night, there were all of these sinners who were part of the crowd as well. And if you look at the Bible, in fact, when you're praying for this, it's better to be with a group. They're all Christians and you're whatever. And so that afternoon, I was like, God, how are we going to do this? And I started asking the Holy Spirit's help because I didn't know. And fortunately... I was sick enough that I knew I really had to depend on God and I didn't have much voice, so I knew I had to depend on God, so I was really praying. I was desperate in prayer. And as I prayed, I didn't know what to do still. I thought, God, how are we going to do this? But as I was praying, God also touched my heart and spoke to me. When I say spoke to me, I heard no voice, but what it means, some of you say, yeah, 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 I know. But some of you don't, so let me explain it. What I, when I say, when the Holy Spirit spoke to me, what I mean is I felt an impression in my thoughts and in my heart, and I, I knew that it was the Lord leading me in understanding something. I felt the Lord also, He didn't give me an answer about how we were going to pray that night, but I felt the Lord say something to me about the children. And He impressed on my heart, that's right, all these children, He impressed on my heart, I, I want to pour my spirit on children. I want to touch, I want to touch children as well. And so I thought, okay, Lord. <coughs> so the evening came. We prayed. It was, a diff it was a different situation. There were many young mothers with very small children. We gave the altar call. I looked at Ren. I thought, how are we going to do this? There were all these, pardon my language, there were all these heathens in the back. You know what I mean. Um, <coughs> so they're all back there. I thought, God, how, how is this going to work? And so we gave the altar call. Those who wanted to be baptized with the Holy Spirit came up very quickly, especially among the young people. But then all these young mothers came up, and they were holding babies, and they were praying to the Lord, tears rolling down their cheeks, holding their babies while they're standing there. As they're praying, some of them were breastfeeding. They were feeding their children. But what what you going to do, you know? You've got to. They were holding. Their babies were sleeping. They were holding. So they're praying. They're feeding their kids. They're praying for the Holy Spirit. They're crying. Didn't bother God at all. That was part of His plan. I didn't know that in the afternoon. And then, so we're praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then I look, and then pa uh, Pastor and Rowena say something else in Cebuano. And you know I don't speak any Cebuano. And then... <laughs> All the heathens came up too. And pretty much everybody that was there, all those that were sitting on the outside edges, that man in the red shirt that I told you about, that you saw at water baptism, he kind of came, he didn't go all the way to the front, he kind of came up on the side that way. So all of them came up as well. And we found out later, because that was the Holy Spirit's plan, I didn't know how it was going to be, a lot of them were getting saved that night. We didn't give it salvation altar call. We didn't pray the sinner's prayer. Now pray this after, repeat this after me. Why? The Holy Spirit was doing it. Why? Because prayer is His realm. Prayer is His, his realm. While we were praying, we found out later, I, I, don't, I didn't know if anybody was filled with the Holy Spirit. I couldn't understand what they were saying, so I was going around because I wanted to know, you know. And I'd pray for somebody, then I'd listen like that, but I, I couldn't tell, I, you know. <laughs> But as I found out later that there were, that God gave some visions of heaven, 
as they were filled with the Holy Spirit. There were others that described just the, the like, like cool water being poured over them as they were refreshing. We didn't know any of that, but see, prayer is the Holy Spirit's realm. It's His area. It's His area. And He doesn't always have to tell us what He's doing. So that's why we pray. That's why we pray. So we're praying, we're praying, and then all of a sudden, and I wish I wanted to take more pictures, but to tell you the truth, I didn't want to interrupt the Holy Spirit. I didn't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. I really, I was like, I wanted to take pictures so badly, but I thought, no, never mind. I'll just tell you about it. So when people were praying, I looked over, there were all the heathens, they had come up. So Rowena, you know, bless her heart. Rowena, boy, she loved that part. She was over there praying for all of them. Many of them, it was the first time they'd ever come forward. The man in the red shirt that was baptized in water, okay? His name was Alex. He was a great persecutor of the church. In the barangay, he would laugh and mock them as they worked and prayed in the church. Laugh at them publicly. Tell other people to laugh at them. He was the chief drunkard and gambler in their village. And he would lead all the others. He had all sorts of fighting gamecocks and things like that. And I didn't know what God was doing in his heart. And then when we had the water baptism, because I, I didn't, I, I, he didn't speak any English, and so we were just praying, but the Holy Spirit was working. And when we had the water baptism, he stood in that hut that you saw and he gave his testimony. He said, I want to be baptized in water. I want my sins to be, and my vices, they often use that word, my vices to be washed away and made clean. And he was baptized. We didn't know this until later. And then when we talked with him, we called back. He has been coming to church. He has not drunk since then. He has not gambled since then. When his friends come to his house to try to tempt him, he says, no, I don't do that anymore because God the Holy Spirit was at work and I didn't know how that would work out. So that was happening over there. And then as we were praying, I heard behind me, and we come, thank you for your patience this morning, I heard behind me a small child, oh, just cry out. And I thought, what is that? And so I turned around and as I turned around, there was a little girl standing there, and she was just, she had come up later, because the kids were running around and playing at that point. She had come up, she was standing there, and she was just crying out to God. I don't know what she was praying for. And then I remembered that the Holy Spirit had touched my heart and said, I want to pour out my spirit on children. And so she stood there and she's prayed for a while. Then I told you last week about the three little boys that came up, and right next to her were these three little boys. And they were just praying. And I told you that, wet here with tears, <laughs> crying. They were looking for comfort. They were praying. Let me tell you about one of them. The one I told you said, that little boy, that little boy, the one in the red shirt, right, that I said, pay attention to him. Um, he's not, he's, he's, there, there, this one, this one, this one, yeah, this one. Now, he looks bigger than he is, but he's a small little boy about this boy. Tender, tender heart, but he's a very gentle little boy. And you could see that. And he was a little bit, as, as you would say in the Filipino culture, you'd say he's a little bit soft. He was a little bit effeminate in, in his actions. And, but just he was that, was, that was his, that was his nature. I mean, that's, you know, that he was that way. And what we found out was that in his home, because of that, the family was quite large. What we found out was in his home, his parents and especially his mother was saying all the time, you are gay. You are gay. You are gay. And he accepted that. And the reason she said that was because I'll keep him close to me, I'll keep him around, and then he'll help me in the household. He'll help me with the family. He'll help me do things in the house. And he was a little bit, he's a little bit soft, he's a little bit that way. So, and so he would say, and so they would, and, and, that, and then everybody else picked it up too. Oh, you're gay, you're gay, you're gay. What a horrible curse to put on any child. She said that after that evening, and she'd been trying to talk with the family, she said, no, this is what the Bible says about homosexuality. But she said, after that evening, that little boy, when it came up again, he said, no, I'm not. I'm a man. I'm a man. The Holy Spirit did that in his heart and broke that, that, those evil words that were pronounced over him because that's what the Holy Spirit does. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And brothers and sisters, as we close now, and thank you so much for your patience. And we don't know what else was done, but I want to say this to you. This realm is the Holy Spirit's realm in your heart, in your life. How could somebody, how could a mother say that? But you know what? 
Some of you have heard terrible things in your life as well. You'll never amount to anything. You're worthless. You're a loser. Nobody will ever love you. Who could this, that, or whatever? I want to tell you something this morning. Those things are not true just because somebody has said it. You let the Holy Spirit work in your life and break you and break that off of you and break that from your life because the Holy Spirit is God and He works miracles. If He could take Brother Alex now, whom you will meet in heaven one day, and just like that, without publicly praying a sinner's prayer, change him from his addictions. And those, those of you that have been caught in, 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 um, in alcoholism or, or, or gambling before, you know the addictive nature of that. God set him free. God can do miracles in our lives. Give him place. Give him time to work in your life. He's God the Holy Spirit. This is his realm. This is his area. The things of your family, the things that you think, well, that's just the way it is. My family was this or my family was that. Listen, brothers and sisters, you have been brought into the family of God. Amen. You have a new family. You have a new family. And in your new family, your life is lived in the power of the Spirit and those things of the past that you thought, I'll always live with this. I'll never be different. This is part of my life. Those, those things need not be because you're in a new family and it's God's family. And it's a family where the Holy Spirit works in your heart and your life. Give Him place. Give Him time. Pray with Him. Let Him help you this week as you pray. You, you get tired and you feel like it's going to be tough to pray? Ask the Holy Spirit for help this week. Amen? Amen? Let's close in prayer. Lord, we come to you right now. We thank you so much for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, Lord, and Father, thank you so much for keeping your promise to send the Holy Spirit. We're grateful. And Holy Spirit, we want to give you your place in our lives. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us to pray. We are such wimps in prayer. Lord, we really are. We really are. We try, we fail. We know we should, we don't. Oh, help us this week. Help us this week. Don't let the devil win in our lives this week in the area of prayer. But Holy Spirit, help us to give you place and work with you and pray with you and pray through. You pray through us this week. Make a difference in our lives. Make us what you want us to be. Break from us the bonds of the past, the, the words and the, the things that have been spoken over our lives that we thought, well, that's just the way it is and that's just the way I am and, and I'm just... I can't help it. That's the way it is. Oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, make a difference. Make a change as we submit to your work in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.